ಇತಿಪಿಸೊ ಬದೇವಾ ಅರೇಹ ಸಂಬುಧೋ ವಿಧ್ಯಾಚರಣ ಸಂಪನ್ನೋ ಸುಗತೋ ಲೋಕವಿದು ಅನುತ್ತರೋ ಪುರಿಷದಮ್ಮ ಸಾರತಿ ಸತ್ತೇವ ಮನೋಸ್ಥಾನ Namaste. So this is the introduction to a new series on the Mahasatipatthana Sutta by the Buddha, the great discourse on the establishment of mindfulness. Now mindfulness is a hot topic these days. There's a lot of commercial action going on about people pretending to teach mindfulness. <laughs> But as far as I can tell, they're not teaching any recognizable version of what the Buddha taught as mindfulness. Kind of all they're teaching is kind of very simplified, like sit down and shut up. <laughs> Be here now. <laughs> well, actually, those are prerequisites to developing mindfulness. But to develop and establish mindfulness as a state of being is going to take a lot more than that. What is that? Well, the Buddha runs it down in this sutra. Let's see how it opens. Thus I have heard On one occasion, the Blessed One was living among the Kuru people at a Kuru village named Kamasadhamma. There, the Blessed One addressed the monks. Monks! Venerable Sir, those monks replied to the Blessed One. The Blessed One said this. Monks, this is the one-way path for the purification of beings. for the complete transcendence of sorrow and lamentation, for the disappearance of pain and depression, for the attainment of the way, for the realization of Nibbana, that is, the four establishments of mindfulness. What for? One, monks, a monk abides, observing the body as the body, dedicated, completely aware and mindful, without covetousness or depression about the world. Two, one abides observing feelings as feelings, dedicated, completely aware and mindful, without covetousness or depression about the world. Three, one abides observing the mind as the mind, dedicated, completely aware and mindful, without covetousness or depression about the world. Four, one abides observing phenomena as phenomena, dedicated, completely aware and mindful, without covetousness or depression about the world. This is a little bit different than the commercial people are defining mindfulness, or I should say misdefining it, because this is the source. This is the original material. This is the origin of the term mindful or mindfulness. So what does it really mean to be mindful? The word mindful is an English translation of the Pali word sampajana, which can mean thoughtful, mindful, attentive, deliberate, almost synonymous with sutta, or which is another word for mindful, acting with consideration or full attention. And sutta, meaning mindful, is the origin of the word satipatthana, establishing mindfulness, the application of mindfulness. Sati means mindful. And patana means application, remaining, or abiding. Now we encounter this word abiding quite often in the suttas. 
And we have to be very clear on what it means. It doesn't mean the same thing as we usually use the word in English. Let's take a look at the dictionary definition of abiding. Pali word viharati is translated as abide. Now, as an active verb or transitive verb, it can mean to bear patiently, tolerate. I cannot abide such bigots. To endure without yielding, withstand, abide the attack. Wait for, await. I will abide the coming of my Lord. Accept without objection. I will abide your decision. Or it can be an intransitive verb. To remain stable or fixed in a state, love abides with him. To continue in a place, sojourn, I will abide with the Lord. Or it can be a phrase, abide by, which is an active verb, but that's not it. We're interested in the intransitive definitions. So in an inch, as an intransitive verb, abide means to remain fixed in a certain state or condition. And this is the core meaning of abide as it is used in this sutra. So what we're going to do in this series is go very methodically through the original sutra, which very few people do. You know, I've noticed on the internet People like to give a digest or a summary of the sutras, especially long sutras like this one. But in this case, and in the case of many other sutras, the real value of the sutra is in the details. How does the Buddha define the various aspects of mindfulness? Because mindfulness is not a simple thing. It has, well, from the introduction, four aspects. And what are they? Observing the body as the body, observing feelings as feelings, observing the mind as the mind, and observing phenomena as phenomena. In other words, we're not going to make up any stories about these things. We're going to observe the body as a body. The body is not me, the body is not my family, the body is not my world, the body is not who I am. Huh? There is no identity conception related to the body, and there are no stories about the body. Like, I came from this country, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do that, and I am the such and such, Huh? Manager of production at so-and-so company? No. We're just going to observe the body as the body. No made-up stories. No designations. No lamentations. No desires. But just to see the body as it is, without anything added on. See, our problem... <laughs> And the reason why we get stuck in this world is like we, we like to make up stories about things and add it on to our impressions or our observations of those things as if they were actually those things. This is called identification, projection. So we're interested in observing things as they are, observing the body as the body observing the mind as the mind, observing feelings as feelings, observing phenomena as phenomena, without adding anything, uh, without constructing any kind of elaborate belief systems about them, but just observing them as they are, without identification, without projection, without spinning any tall tales, <laughs> and just see them as they are. This is the core definition of mindfulness. Now, of course, if you're learning what's called mindfulness in a corporate environment, and you actually follow these instructions, the first thing you're going to observe 
is that this whole business of corporation is complete bullshit. <laughs> there is no such thing as a corporation. Yeah, there's a building and maybe it has some equipment in it and people are running around doing stuff and talking as if this thing called a corporation is real. But what it actually is, is just a story based on the name of the corporation, XYZ Corporation. Oh, I am an employee of XYZ Corporation and I am a loyal servant of this XYZ Corporation and my position is such and such and my duties are such and such and this is how I make my living. Huh? By serving this abstraction that doesn't really exist. So, to actually observe mindfulness, you have to drop all these external roles. You have to drop all these identifications that uh, put you in a false context and give you a false meaning, a false identity based on those designations. This is the very first, even preliminary, stage of mindfulness. Just to reach the first basic level to observe the body as the body. You have to drop all this other stuff. This is why the Buddha taught primarily monks, people who are already renounced, who have already dropped family and business and politics and nationality and race, and color, and religion, and all of these abstractions that we layer over the top of everything that we observe, and are just there in the here and now to associate with the Buddha, a realized being who is able to show you directly the state of Nibbana, and in the succeeding uh, episodes of this series, we're going to go into all these techniques. You know, people ask me actually quite often how to meditate. And in this uh, discourse on mindfulness, the Buddha is going to give so many techniques of meditation. And we'll explain each one as we encounter it while going through the sutta. So please subscribe to this playlist and uh, watch these videos in order as they come out. The order is quite important. And by the time you get through this series of, I don't know, 30 or 40 videos, you're going to have a very clear idea what mindfulness meditation is all about and that will lead you higher on the path to enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.